before we do that, the man himself, Donald Trump, he's now at the podium in Virginia. Let's take a listen. And I fully, and I fully understand that. But uh, it's been an honor. We just met with some of the folks, uh, who are really representatives, I would say. Senator, I would say representatives from every aspect of the business, right? And uh, it was uh, amazing. It was really amazing. These are great people. They're great Americans. They love this country. And if I get in, if I get in, I mean, you know, it's, it's, if I get in, this is what it is, okay? And, and, and other forms of energy, all forms of energy. But what they've done to the miners is incredible in the Obama administration. And you remember, and I think you might have just seen it, you know, know what they've done. And, and uh, nobody knows, you know, clean coal. Nobody knows why. Look at what's happening with China, the amount of energy they're producing and what they're using coal for. Tremendous amounts of, just tremendous. It's like incredible. And they're not cleaning it. Believe me, they're not cleaning it. We have a small, a very, very small planet compared to the universe, right? And that stuff is going up and they're not cleaning it. And here we produce great stuff and we're not allowed to use it and it's getting worse and worse. So they're going to be out of business soon. Hillary Clinton will be worse than Obama. You know it. She'll be worse. <laughs> Don't forget when she made the statement, going to put the mines and essentially going to put the mines and miners out of business, going to put them out of business. And I guess she forgot about West Virginia, right? She was, she was going to West Virginia. She forgot about Virginia too, in all fairness, you know. But, you know, she had, she had West Virginia right after, short time after that. And you remember when she went into West Virginia, she met with that wonderful family and the man who minor for many years, and he was trying to explain to her. And she was trying to say, well, uh, you know, I really want to keep you. She didn't know. She was groveling. She was groveling. She didn't know what to say. I don't think he was going to be easily convinced. Do we agree? Because she said it, just like she said, and you know, she said it was a mistake, that she's going to raise taxes in the middle class. You saw that one? <laughs> nah, maybe she misspoke. I mean, we have to give him a break, but it did come out awfully loud and clear. I, I, I don't know. Hey, look, hopefully it won't matter, okay? Hopefully it's not going to matter because she's not going to get the chance. But what I told, what I told the folks before we were over at Peterbilt, the plant, incredible. But we, what, I told, what I told the folks before is, is that you have to get out and vote. Because, you know, the miners, to a certain extent, they're so down and they've been treated so badly that they haven't been voting. They haven't been going out and voting like they can. And that includes members of their family that have left the mining business, let members of the family, they've left coal, they've left everything. And they've gone into something else, and that's fine. That's great. But they live in Virginia, and they vote. And their parents are still in the coal world where they want to be, and that's where they want to be. But everybody has to get out and vote. If you get out and vote, we're pretty close in Virginia, and she's spending a fortune on ads. A friend of mine said he can't see television without seeing anti-Trump ads. And they're not even true. My friend actually said, they're not true. I said, I know. I could go over those ads one by one and show you the, it's fraudulent actually, but what are you gonna do? She's spending Wall Street money on ads and it's just one after another after another. And this guy kiddingly said, I just wanna see one ivory soap ad, one, <laughs> just to break it. And we haven't spent anything yet, we will be because we're doing well, but we, uh, we haven't spent anything yet. We're holding it. But uh, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really a shame that they can say whatever they want to say. They try and demean and defame. And then you look at what she's doing with her emails. 33,000 missing emails. Yeah, 33,000. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very sad. And then I guess yesterday, a thousand came out or something, some fairly vast number 
Oh, I want to see the ones that what I really would like to see that we have to see the 33,000. Can you imagine? Remember, she said, I think it was for her wedding, the wedding of Chelsea, and it was for yoga classes. 33,000 emails. It's a lot of yoga. It's a lot of yoga. But a couple of uh, very bad ones came out, and it, it's called Pay for Play. And some of these were really, really bad and illegal. If it's true, it's illegal. You're paying and you're getting things. I mean, I watched yesterday because of The Apprentice, Blagojevic, right? Governor Blagojevic, 14 years in jail. And, you know, some people think, okay, some people think it's crazy. Look at what she's done, nothing. She's running for president. But it came out that her people pay for play. And very big stories today. The problem is it'll be big stories for about two minutes and then they're going to drop it because the media is so totally dishonest. So totally. If that were me, if that were me, the story that just came out this morning and really hidden from some of the major newspapers, hidden. If that were me, that would be the biggest story in the history of the various papers. They'd go quadruple spacing, boom, Trump. But with her, it's uh, just terrible. I mean, it, it's, I mean, some of them covered it uh, big league, but some of them are just refusing to really report the facts. And I think it's going to get worse and worse, though, because I assume more stuff will come out. But this was big stuff. Pay for play. It's illegal. I mean, it's illegal. And uh, we'll see what happens with it, folks. We'll see what happens with it. But it's very serious stuff. It's very, very serious. Um, I don't know that it can be any more serious than deleting or getting rid of 33,000 emails and all of the other things, the server, the server, which you're not allowed to have the information gotten off that server by who knows who, probably many people, many countries potentially, Secretary of State to put us all in that position. So I think it's a very sad thing. And they give her a pass on everything. Give her a pass. It's so sad when I watched that. And it was point after point after point. And everybody was saying, wow, they're really going to do it. And then they go, however, and as soon as I heard, you know, when you hear the word, however, but it's just, it's just uh, so incredible that a thing like that could happen. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. In the meantime, we're doing very well. You saw the polls over the last day or two have really tightened up a lot. Um, I think we're going to have a great victory. I really feel it. I think we're going to have a great victory. One of... One of the things I suggested is your, your ballots. You go and sign, do it early so you don't have to. Because on November 8th, we have our big day. And if you go in and sign, we have some people in the room now that I met before. They're going to be pushing hard. But put in your ballots. Uh, they have certain requirements, and you live by those requirements perfectly. Make sure they don't lose your ballot. Make sure they don't lose your vote, which I'm sure, you know, and I just left a great place, North Carolina. And they just had a tremendous loss, uh, voter ID, voter ID. They lost voter ID. How do you lose voter ID? You mean you don't have to show identification? You don't have to show that, hey. And then you say, you know, I've been talking about the rig system for a long time, and I get hammered in the press for talking about, oh, I can't believe he'd be talking about the rig system. And then in the meantime, voter ID, you don't have to do. And I'm sure none of those folks would be voting uh, 10 times during one day, right? I'm sure a thing like that. But I get it. And, and really, the, a big part of the rig system is the press itself, because they can take a little story that isn't a story and make it into a big deal. Happens so much. Happens so much. And speaking of that, remember this. We have so many things that we have to protect in this country. We have to protect our Second Amendment, which is under siege. Remember that. Remember that. It's under siege. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have to 
You know, I see, uh, and, and by the way, we have a lot of unity in the Republican Party, but nobody talks about it. If one senator says, we're not voting for Trump, never Trump, some people were beating, beaten so badly that they, you know, they just can't get there. And I understand that. I mean, I can see how that can happen. So, you know, they've, they've won throughout their lives politically, and then they lose an election by a lot to a guy that never ran before, okay? <laughs> I never ran before. Never thought I'd be doing it this time either, but I watch what's going on and I say, it's time. It's time. Boy, is it time, right? You know, I look at the Iran deal. How about the $400 million in cash? How about that? How about that? The 400 million, you know what that is? You know what, does anybody know what that would even look like? 400, and did you see Iran? actually finally did do what I thought they were going to do. They released pictures because they want to embarrass the United States, just like they took the 10 sailors and they made us look so bad. They made us look so bad. It was like a humiliation of our country. Okay, this is horrible. And then we keep going and going. And you saw what their so-called leader, somebody would say the supreme leader, I refuse to use that term. President Obama would say, the supreme leader. What is going on, folks? What is going on with our leaders, and with our leader in particular? He is grossly incompetent, okay? Grossly incompetent. So, so there are 400 million in cash going. It happens to be the same day as the hostages were released. The hostages were in the airport for massive amounts of time. And I guess one of them said they wouldn't let us go because they were waiting for a certain plane to come in. And I just can't imagine what was on that plane, right? We can't imagine. I'm sure, it had nothing to do with the $400 million. But isn't that unbelievable? And then he'll stand up and he'll say that one thing had nothing to do with the other. And that practically, I guess you could say, there's a 1% or 2% chance that, you know, that what he said is right. But that's about it. They would practically, they, they're saying they're waiting for something else on a plane to come in, right? And they were at the airport forever. And they say, and President Obama said, no, this had nothing to do with the hostages. And, you know, if you remember with Obamacare, he said, you can keep your plan, you can keep your doctor, you'll have your doctor, you have your plan. How many times? He said it 28 times or something. And many Democrats approve that disaster. It's a disaster. We're going to repeal it and replace it, by the way. But, but many, many Democrats, many, many Democrats would not have approved, you know, one by almost nothing. The margin was almost nothing. And a lot of Democrats approved it. They didn't want to approve it. But, you know, with the doctor and the plan and over and over again, a lot of pressure put on. And it's out of control. Premiums are going up at a, a, pri at a, at a rate that nobody has ever seen before. You know, in Texas, through Blue Cross Blue Shield, they just had almost a 50 percent increase. And they, the big increase is now going to come on November 1st. And they're trying to delay it till after the election because it is catastrophic. It is going to be an increase like never before. I'm hearing numbers that I don't even want to say because the press will say, oh, that's terrible. He, he exaggerated. It's not going to be an exaggeration. It's going to be election changing. And we can't let those numbers be released on another date sometime after the election because it will show what a total disaster Obamacare is so important. So I just say to all of the politicians in the room, and your great congressman, who's a terrific guy. Where is he, by the way? Yeah, he's here. Oh, oh, congressman, stand up. Stand up. Vote for him. He's our guy. <laughs> Senator, stand up, Senator. Come on, Senator. Good. Now, we have, we have great people here. So right now, they're swimming uphill. But with Trump, we'll be just sliding beautifully down. It'll be a whole different deal. It'll be a whole different deal. And it can happen quickly. 
It can happen. We discussed that. We had a big meeting and we discussed it. It's going to happen very quickly. It's not, doesn't need to go through Congress and doesn't need to go through lots of different things. EPA is very important, what they've done. And we want, everybody agrees, we want clean air and we want clean water. Do we agree? I want. So, uh, so I very much appreciate the meeting. It was a great meeting. I just want to say that Virginia has lost one in three manufacturing jobs since NAFTA. Now, NAFTA was signed by Bill Clinton. NAFTA is a disaster. It's been a disaster not only for Virginia, but for every, you know, virtually every state. Uh, upstate New York, it looks like a war zone. That's why I won so much. And I got the upstate vote in numbers that nobody's seen before. Upstate New York, you go to New England, you see the, the factories, these beautiful old factories that you see, they were once thriving. Thousands and thousands of people working. And those people now are doing part-time jobs. They're working two jobs. They're making less money than they made 18 years ago. I don't know if you saw that statistic, where people, and people in this room too, but where people are making less money now in real wages than they made 18 years ago, and even longer. And they've gotten older, gotten older, and they're working harder. It's not supposed to be that way. Suppo hey, of course, I've gotten older and I'm working harder too, to be honest with you. I didn't need this. I could have uh, enjoyed myself a lot. We're all getting older and we're working hard. It's supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be the other way, right? We're getting older and starting to relax. No, it's not working. I don't know. I don't know if I'd like that. I love what I'm doing. I, I have been all over this country. We have the greatest people anywhere in the world, the greatest people. And I have the greatest supporters. We have the most loyal supporters and the smartest. You know, they always like to demean everything. They try and demean supporters. They're always trying to put a little knock, you know, little shots. Boom, boom, boom. We've got the smartest. We've got the most loyal. We've got the hardest working. We have the best people. They like to demean. But we have amazing, just amazing people. And I've seen this all over the country. And we can start making Apple computers in our country. Okay, folks? We can start doing We can start doing you know, we go to China, and you think even the shipping cost, when you just think of it, the shipping cost, I mean, how much of a difference? We can, and you bid it all the different states, and you'll get the good deal from somebody. Just keep it in our country. When they close plants and they move to Mexico, and then a company builds in Mexico whatever product they're making, and then they think they're going to sell the product back into the United States, all of their people have been fired. Every single one of them have been fired. And they're now using people from another nation to make the same product. And you know what? They think they're going to sell it across our border, which, by the way, will become a very powerful, very strong border, okay? It's no longer going to be a piece of Swiss cheese. And they think, they think they're going to sell it across the border, no tax, no nothing, sell it to wherever it came from, let the people that got laid off buy it, and now maybe they're unemployed, maybe they're working two jobs and they're making less, right? as we said, and it's not going to happen, folks. And I've watched for years as our government, which is, I guess you could say stupid, but honestly, not so stupid. They're controlled by special interests. When you see companies moving over to Mexico and other places. All right, so from Donald Trump, we go to Hillary Clinton speaking at her own rally uh, in Des Moines, Iowa. Who understand that, no, we can be the clean energy superpower of the 21st century.